Well, I've come from um, 30, 35 years of alcoholism and substance abuse um, to where I lost everything. I even lost myself. I was raised in a very good family, um, but there was drinking and domestic violence. And as I grew older, I thought that was the normal thing. And I became a victim of domestic violence and ultimately I became homeless because of it. I couldn't pull it together. I couldn't do it. Well, I want to say the drugs and the alcohol were the reason why I couldn't do it. Yeah, they were part of it. it. wasn't the main reason. It was me. There were hard, hard times out there on the streets. I was, I was uh, assaulted. I was sexually molested out there. And but I was also. Um, really heavy into my drug addiction and I craved having a place of my own. I craved it. I, I watched these people day after day and they'd help me out handing me money and I thought I know they're leaving here and they're going home and, and, and I was like hurting and I needed a home. When I first heard about the Corporation for Supportive Housing, I think what really attracted me was this very simple concept of permanent supportive housing. But at the time, the mentality was more short-term shelters for a day, a week, a month, six months, and then the person would be back on the streets. It was this Band-Aid mentality, and, and Corporation for Supportive Housing actually had a concept that was more of a long-term solution. The difference between supportive housing and other interventions is that supportive housing combines affordable housing with supportive services. And when I say affordable housing, what I mean is that people have an apartment or a home of their own that through rental assistance is affordable to them. And then combining that affordable housing with wraparound supportive services to help them get stable. So that includes case management. For some people, that includes mental health treatment. For some people, that includes substance abuse treatment. For others, it's primary health care. But it's very much a set of social services that are really based on each person's individual needs and what they need to help get stable and address the issues that led to their homelessness in the first place. I always looked at people thinking, God, I hope that I could have that someday. I hope that I could be like them, because I am like them. From that comfort that this apartment actually gives me, it put me in a position to connect with my children. Everybody deserves to have a home. Everybody deserves security. Um, everybody deserves to be healthy. Everybody deserves to make choices for themselves. CSH created the Supportive Housing Community Advocates Program to give the men and women who've experienced homelessness the opportunity to speak for themselves about solutions to homelessness. And it's through the advocates' stories that we not only learn about their own recovery, but about how much they give back to their communities today and how much they've become integral parts of their community. Corporation for Supportive Housing took me to Oakland and I went to a resident council meeting there. And then I went to uh, Sacramento as a constituent and met a lot of senators, lobbied some bills. And when I show other people these pictures, they're like, who's that, who's this? And I say, oh, these are advocates. That, they used to be homeless? Oh my God, they're like dressed down, suits, you know? And it's, it's amazing just that's, that's proof that it works. And if that doesn't show somebody, I don't know what will. <laughs> Homelessness is solvable, and we have so much opportunity in Los Angeles. We have amazing public leaders and amazing philanthropic leaders and amazing business leaders at the table, but we have a lot of work ahead of us and a lot of room for additional collaborations and a new thinking in how we address homelessness. What gives me hope for the future is I can see that our efforts at trying to completely eliminate chronic homelessness are actually paying off and we're getting closer and closer to that day.